So here we have Sigmund Freud. You could call him the poster child of the psychodynamic perspective. Really, he invented it. Um, so who is Freud? What did he do? Well, what's important for you and for this class in psychology is he's highly significant because he came up with a grand theory of everything. Unlike other psychologists um, who maybe had a theory about one particular thing or one particular disorder, Freud had a um, system of beliefs, a theory to explain everything, all that we do and the underlying influences in what we do and what we believe. Freud had an explanation for day-to-day -day life, child development, mental illness, religion, war, and love. So this isn't a history class. I'm not going to go in depth about um, random important psychological people just uh, to tell you about history, but Freud is important because so much rests on what he said today. Um, and even more importantly, a lot of these ideas have critical influences on how we think about the present. So one very interesting claim that Freud made uh, was about how we view ourselves. And I'm going to use this iceberg analogy to explain it. So here's what's so interesting is this idea of unconscious motivation. And this involves rejecting the claim that you know what you're doing. And so let's, let's think about an iceberg for a moment. And let's think about your favorite movie, everyone's favorite movie, the Titanic, of course. So there they are, that, uh, what's his name? Oh, Leo and that beautiful girl. They're in love on this lovely, lovely, perfect, gigantic ship. Um, and there's this iceberg. Now, how is it that this perfect, gigantic, amazing ship ended up sinking in the Atlantic. Well, we know that maybe only a little bit of the iceberg was seen from the surface of the water, but about 90% of an iceberg is underneath the water. You can't see it. And so it is what was underneath this gigantic uh, sea monster dinosaur thing, whatever that is, that is what caused the Titanic to sink. And Freud's theory of personality and unconscious motivations tells us uh, in a very similar way that it's what's underneath what we see that um, controls our behavior and our desires. So we might see the tip of the iceberg in who we are. We might be able to acknowledge and identify parts of who we are, but much of who we are is our unconscious and we're completely unaware of it, yet that is what drives our decisions and our beliefs. So we have three parts of our personality. We have the conscious, things that we're aware of, the part of the iceberg you can see from above the water. Then we have the pre-conscious, things that we could be made aware of if we think about them. And then there's the unconscious, is that deep hidden reservoir that holds the true you, the true us. Your desires, your fears all rest under there, yet you're completely unaware of that. Little cartoon for you. And let's dig into this concept of the psyche. So Freud labeled the tip of the iceberg, what you can see as your ego, that's what you're consciously aware of. And then the pre-conscious is your super ego and the unconscious is your id. So let's start with the id. The id is what is first to develop uh, when you're born. It exists entirely in the unconscious. You're not really aware of it. And you have to consider those your hidden animalistic wants and desires. And it works on the pleasure principle. The pleasure principle is concerned with avoiding pain and, and receiving instant gratification. I want it and I want it now. And these kinds of pleasurable things, I guess you could say, the animalistic parts of the self would be what you want to eat, you want to drink, um, pee, poop, get warm, have sexual satisfaction. The it is outrageously stupid and it, it wants pleasure and it wants it now. Now, unfortunately, life doesn't work like that, and that's where we have the ego. Now, the ego develops after the id, and it works on the reality principle. The reality principle is negotiating between those wants, those animalistic id wants and desires, and the actual environment. So um, let's pretend you're a guy for a moment, half of you ladies, guys, no problem there. And you really like this girl, she's gorgeous. And if you work on the id principle, you want to take her. You want to um, do what you want with her. But from the ego's perspective, you got to think about consequences. What would happen if you actually did that? Well, you might end up in jail, so you just smack it hard. Um, you ask her out and do what you can and hope for the best. The ego is influenced by your unconscious. 
but the ego is the part of you that you are consciously aware of. It's the personality part that you actually see and everyone sees as our personality. And then next we have the superego. Now the superego is the last to develop. It doesn't really develop until about the age of five. And it develops really through a system of um, learning about punishments. So it's our conscience. It's what we think the difference between right and wrong is. And we've learned that from our parents. If you do something and you act out on your id, you, you go after what you want, that pleasure principle, you might notice that you have punishments. So the superego has developed showing you what's right and what's wrong. You could call the superego the internalized rules of parents in society. Now the ego often mediates between the superego and the id. So the id is pushing on the ego saying, I want, I want, I want. And the superego is, is controlling the ego saying, no, 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 don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. Now when you think about these three parts, we've got our id, our ego, and our superego. Um, it, it may be helpful to think about it like the id is the, the demon or the devil and the super ego is the angel with the halo, the good in you, and the ego is in the middle trying to decide. But one thing I want you to remember is um, just as stupid as the id is, the id is just um, going on animalistic instincts, the super ego is stupid too because the super ego is pushing the ego down. It's pushing you down telling you, oh my gosh, how dare you do that? How dare you even think about that? You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a horrible person. And this is highly destructive on the ego. And, and both of these components, the id and the superego, are what um, are involved in controlling our behaviors and in controlling our desires and in controlling really who we truly are, according to Freud. And what's important here is that most of this is in the unconscious. You are not aware of it. So we can't access it. We can't even acknowledge it. Um, you can't uh, meditate and look deep within yourself and be introspective about it and find them. They are there, they do their work without your conscious knowledge. And that's an important thing to think about as we move through the next two videos, looking at defense mechanisms and looking at Freud's psychosexual stages of development. Thanks for listening. That's all for this one.